this is Arielle. Bonjour. Welcome to my channel where we make fun costumes and weird stuff. Today we are working on the Fantasy Rococo project. I already made the wig and now we need some frilly underwear to achieve the 18th century silhouette. At first I wanted to do this panier that is in the movie Marie Antoinette. No! Because it would go very well with this pair of stays that I've already made. 164 reed bones and hand-sewn eyelets. But also there is this option that you find a lot in historical fashion, which is pocket hoops. The structure gives the silhouette, but it's also giant bags on your hips for storing all your stuff. Who doesn't want giant pockets? Not me. So let's combine the two into some frilly undergarments that are also practical. Also, yes, I dyed my hair purple, but it's now fading into pink, gray and blue. I was thinking maybe next time I should try red. What do we think? Okay, let's get to work. First, I needed a plan. Some measurements to make sure that I had enough fabric and supplies. The main piece is a rectangle with a slit for the pocket. Then a long piece, three times as wide, to make the ruffle at the bottom. Another rectangle is the inside of the pocket, and this uh, horseshoe shape is the bottom. Then I need six blue strips for the ruffles, six pieces of steel bones, eight blue ribbons, and some twill tape for the waistband. The main fabric is a white cotton bed sheet, as always. I usually use that for every historical underwear because it's cheap, it's cotton, so very breathable, and I have a lot of it in my stash. Most pieces are just rectangles, so I'm just tearing the fabric apart, which is very satisfying. The blue is also a cotton bed sheet that I am tearing as well. For the ruffles, I am not going to hem those long strips because la flemme, but also I like a little bit of fraying, it gives this little uh, fuzzy you see here. And with that, I have all my pieces ready. On the big piece, I marked where the boning will be with a pencil because it's okay, it will be covered with the blue ruffle. And I also marked where the slit for the pocket will be. I can open that with my scissors. Then I fold it twice and I sew it by machine. I added a tight zigzag at the point so it will be more secure. Then I start with the bottom ruffle. This is a long strip of uh, four meters that I have to hem. And then I will cut it in half. Now the other side of that strip needs to be gathered. So I made two rows of very long stitches close to each other. Then I can pull the threads on one side and I can gather the whole strip to the width, 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 width that I want. Then I can pin that into the bigger rectangle and I can distribute the gathers a bit more evenly. Even. Oh, dur ce soir. And this gets sewn in place. I needed some kind of marking on my machine to make it easier to stay even when I'm doing long lines, so I used some rainbow tape because we always need more colors in life. Then I could do some more ruffling on the blue strips. The lines of gathering are a bit uh, wider apart because these will be the channel where I could insert the boning. And I can pin them on the main part just following the lines that I mark. The bottom one was a bit tricky to sew because the other ruffle was in the way, but it's fine. With all the decoration in place, now I need to assemble the volume. The bottom of the pocket is just a horseshoe shape. So I measured the width of the big piece. I draw it with a pencil and I cut it. But it did not work. So I unpicked it and I redid it a little bit more narrow. Before sewing the inside piece, I thought I would sew the ribbon at the same time. So I cut my eight pieces of ribbon and burned it so it wouldn't fray. I pinned one side in place to see if it would uh, work, and it did. I just had to make the top boning a little bit smaller so the silhouette was right. So let's assemble everything. The whole shoe first. Then I thought about serging the inside, but I would have to change the threads to white. So I was lazy. 
and I did a zigzag stitch. Good enough. I pinned the ribbons to be sandwiched between the last pieces. Then zigzag again and we have a bag. I made sure to leave some places free of stitches so I could insert the boning. I curved the top part a little bit and I could gather it so it would fit into the waistband. The waistband is just a piece of twill tape, so it is sturdy and can hold the weight of the pocket and what will be inside. And I pinned the gathered top onto it. I made two rows of stitches so it would be secured and I cut off the excess so I could fold the waistband in half. Now we can add the boning, which is this uh, flat steel that can be cut by hand, because I'm strong, like a bear, or at least a ripped raccoon. I cut off the sharp edges with pliers and I filed the rest. We don't want this to cut through the fabric and poke out. I also added some electrical tape, which would have looked better in wet, but it's fine. Then all the bones can be inserted into the channels. Remember that I said that the top boning needed to be a bit smaller? Since this is a big rectangle, this piece of boning will be able to, to move around in its channel. So I added a piece of uh, straight grain fabric that I sewn by hand. This will secure the top boning in place, because it is the most important one. This was the last step, and now let's edit a reveal. The theme will be historical pockets and France. And I spent 11 hours on those 60 seconds. Was it worth it? Uh, <laughs> why do I do this? Come on, leave a like. <laughs> Sorry. Mais où vais-je mettre toutes mes affaires Dans mes poches. J'adore les poches. Poche, poche, poche. On peut mettre plein de trucs dans ces poches. <rire> Mais où vais-je mettre toutes mes affaires Dans mes poches. Poche, poche. J'adore les poches. <rire> On peut mettre plein de trucs dans ses poches. T'as des trucs Eh bien, mets-les dans tes poches. Subscribe.